For electric car, most of the car manufacturers focuses on sedans like the Model 3 or the Nissan's Leaf or even the subcompact cars like the Renault Zoe, uh, the Volkswagen ID3, the BMW i3. Hyundai and the Kia have a different take on this. So Hyundai offers Kona, a subcompact crossover, and Kia offers Nero, which is uh, the sister car. So it's also a subcompact crossover. So Hyundai and Kia is doing a good job with their electric offering with their subcompact crossover category. So um, today the tester behind me is this Hyundai's Kona Electric 2020, um, the brand new version. And it comes in two different trims. It comes in the basic comfort trim and then the higher style trim. And the tester behind me is the basic comfort trim. 2020 that I'm going to test today. So let's see how it performs. Now let's start looking at the front profile, starting with the headlights. So Hyundai did a good job with separation of their daytime running lights from the main headlights. So they, because of the separation, uh, the daytime running lights are looking very sleek. It's a nice design and the main headlight is below. The turn signal is here on the top with the daytime running lights, but then you have a different combination here below so th this is a very good i think design it looks um, quite modern and sleek and it separates um, hyundai's kona from other other competitors so i think a very good job with the uh, with the uh, light design and uh, the led lights the daytime running lights and the rear led tail lights come in both the trims so this tester although it's the basic comfort trim it has the day led daytime running lights and the led tail lights but the led headlights which are here below are then uh, offered in the style trim so they are not um, offered in this trim then below that i think um, this is the fog light perhaps um, space which is left here and perhaps they are offered then on the higher trim so there are no fog lights below here it's only a plastic um, space there um, then in the middle so the charging port is well hidden here uh, so uh, so it also looks pretty nice that it's it's hidden so it's not visible and then uh, the Kia's Nero had this mimicked um, glass kind of thing in the middle so it looks like a glass but this one looks a bit like a plastic so it doesn't mimic that well compared to Kia's Nero so it only has this these lines in the middle so the middle profile yeah, it doesn't look that bad it matches with the body color at least um, the bold Hyundai's logo in the middle so the front profile is, is quite modern I would say it would have been better to have that um, well mimicked glass in the middle but anyway this one matches with the with the body color so it doesn't look that bad either then uh, the below profile so we have this small grill space um, it's closed in the electric version but perhaps it's open then in the hybrid and the petrol version so the Kona comes in the hybrid and petrol version as well and that's why perhaps we have this small grill here below yeah so overall yeah I'm, I'm pretty impressed with with the front profile it looks very sleek and very modern for this compact SUV now let's continue on the side profile so we have the 17 inch alloy wheels just like Kia's Nero and uh, 17 inch option for both the comfort and the style version uh, we don't have any other wheel combination offered by Hyundai um, then the side mirrors so the side mirror are also then body colored on this trim and uh, the indicators are are also then uh, the turn indicators are here on the side mirrors as well then we have the blue drive badge 
Uh, and the side mirrors are foldable only on the higher style trim, so they are not foldable, but they are heated on both the trims. So these ones, the Comfort trim also have, have the side mirrors are heated, but not foldable. Then we have a little bit of this, um, this line there for the blind spot, but the blind spot um, is offered only on the style trim. So this car, the Comfort trim doesn't have the blind spot monitoring but uh, but there is some some line there um, so that it can be integrated on the higher trim um, then we have the side sill here it's uh, kind of a gray color i didn't like it that much so it has this plastic and then this uh, gray colored side sill it would have been better to leave it actually just the body color but that's my opinion again and uh, this plastic which goes then above the wheels i didn't like it that much it looks a bit cheap in my opinion um then then the handle it has the the button which is used to open and close the door so you press the button and it closes and if you open the button again it opens so instead of the sensor on the back you just use this button to enter to lock or unlock the car then let's continue on the back profile so we have this um, nice looking antenna the shark fin antenna even on the basic trim so this means that all the trims are coming with the shark fin antenna which is pretty good the top mounted brake light and a spoiler on the top um, so so pretty nice that we have the the brake light also on the top um, and then the rear light so as i said um, the rear led lights um, these ones they are on all the trims um, so you get the led tail tail lights um, and then we have the bold hyundai's badge also here um, then it says electric of course this is the electric version that i'm testing and then what about the parking sensors so the parking sensors we get the rear one um, on the basic trim this one as well but then uh, the front parking sensors are only offered on the style trim so this one this tester the basic trim has only the rear sensors but then the camera so all the trims have the camera so you get um, whatever version of hyundai's kona you are getting you will always get the camera so now the dimensions for this car so this is 418 by 180 centimeter so this is much more compact than its uh, competitor or uh, its sister car kia's nero so even compared to nero this is around 20 centimeter shorter in length so Kia's Nero is around 437 centimeter. This one is 418. So even in a sub compact crossover category, this is a very compact crossover. So the smallest that I have seen in terms of the length, uh, the Model 3, for example, although it's a sedan, but yeah, it's uh, 469, which is 50 centimeter longer than this one. And even the leaf is around 30 centimeter longer. So this is a very short, very small, subcompact um, crossover uh, and then in terms of the width this is uh, 180 centimeter which is around the same as uh, nissan's leaf and around five centimeters shorter in width compared to the model 3 then when it comes to the height so this is a crossover so that's why the height is of course more than the model 3 and the nissan leaf um, but the Nero height is exactly the same. So these two cars have the same height, 157 centimeter. And the height somehow compensates for the shorter length, but it doesn't compensate that much, unfortunately. This is 50 centimeter shorter than Model 3. So the height even doesn't compensate. So it doesn't have much room inside. And unfortunately, that's the reason for its shorter cargo boot space uh, which is much smaller compared to its competitors this has the same engine configuration like the kia's nero so two battery options 39 and 64 kilowatt hour and uh, comparatively for example leaf offers 60 kilowatt hours battery so the 64 kilowatt hours battery option 
is bigger and therefore the range is higher comparatively with the leaf but then model 3 offers 50 and 70 kilowatt hour battery so the 70 kilowatt hour battery for model 3 is bigger compared to this one so um, 39 and 64 kilowatt hour battery with a range of around 450 kilometer just like Kia's Nero is around 450 451 kilometer so in terms of the range model 3 does with its 70 kilowatt hour battery around 500 kilometers so 50 kilometers more which is not bad so um, this 164 kilowatt hour battery the range is quite good around 450 kilometer this is quite impressive um, the leaf does around 385 to 400 kilometer so this is around 50 kilometers more than the leaf then compared to hyundai's own ionic uh, ionic does around 311 kilometer so this is a very impressive range and engine configuration from kia then the rest of the specs the torque is around 395 so around 400 foot pounds of torque compared to tesla which uh, i think with its dual engine offers 500 uh, foot pounds of torque so in that sense i think 400 foot pounds of torque is also not bad um pretty good uh, torque then the power is around 204 so 204 horsepower with 150 kilowatt now for the cargo space so uh hyundai skona offers 332 liters of cargo space which is much smaller of course the dimensions are much smaller for this car compared to its competitors so for example even kia's nero offers 451 liter which is uh, more than 100 liters more space than this car so with the seats up it's 332 and with the seats down it's uh, 1141 so 1141 liters of cargo space which is uh, pretty small so the tesla model 3 offers 425 liters nissan leaf offers 435 liters and kia nero offers 450 liter so all of them has around uh, 400 plus um, in terms of cargo space now let's start looking at the front interior starting from the door side so on the door side you have the same um, just like the the back seat um, uh, just like the back door so you have this uh, kind of a mimicked soft touch but it's not soft it's actually hard and then this one is also then the hard touch so no soft touch here unfortunately i would have expected some soft touch um, this being an electric car for the comfort but um, but there is no soft touch here then you have some space here below a little bit for the cup holder and then some extra space there then the one touch um, windows are only for the front driver side and the passenger side so only from the front side but no one touch for the back side which is a bit disappointing but this is a comfort level trim so perhaps the style level trim then offer more options then the unlock uh, lock and unlock the mirror the mirror controls here and then the 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 handle is not uh, silver aluminium or chrome it's actually the body colored which doesn't look that bad it matches with the body and then you have the small speaker here on the top as well and then the big speaker here on uh, and then below on the door and then the entrance for this car so this is uh, manual uh, controls here on the sides because this is a comfort trim and on the style trim you get eight way power adjustment for the seat both for the driver side and the and the passenger side but this being the comfort trim uh, it has at least the two-way lumbar um, but uh, no power seats um, but it, it's good that at least you have the two-way lumbar on the side and then the interior so this being the comfort trim it doesn't uh, come with the leather interior but um, the seats and uh, it, it has a small bolster on the side and then some stitching at least for contrast but not much stitching there but uh, yeah a normal looking uh, seats upholstery 
it's uh, not that impressive but of course yeah this is a comfort basic trim so it comes with that seat option and then let's continue looking at the side button so we have the the headlight leveling and uh, the illumination and uh, the instrument illumination buttons the, these are standard of course in most of the cars then you have the lane keeping assist um, the stability and then the uh, electric charging option and then just like the Kia's Nero, um, the, this has the VEWS, which is virtual engine sound system. Uh, so this um, produces this fake sound for the electric car because the electric cars don't have any sound. So it alerts the pedestrian. And I'm seeing this more and more electric car manufacturers now offering uh, it nowadays. So I saw that Renault Zoe also has some kind of a button there. So this is nice security feature so let's get inside the car and close the door and let's see yeah it sounds pretty solid so surprisingly yeah, it's a small car but the door sounds really solid now let's continue looking at the interior the dashboard um the head-up display is offered then on the style trim so it has a foldable heads-up display which is amazing um so the style offers that, but this is the comfort model. The basic trim doesn't have the heads up display, but at least it's, a, it's an option for the higher trims. Then the dashboard is all hard touch here, no soft touch, which is a bit disappointing. So it looks a bit like a plastic, um, but it's all body colored, gray colored. And then we have the storage compartment is damped, but uh, no, uh, it's not lined with felt so it's not soft touch from inside then the rear view mirror is uh, is dimmed in both uh, so the dimming option for the rear view is offered in both the trims so this one comfort trim also has this rear view dimming uh, no gloss sunroof option available in hyundai's kona uh, not even on the higher trim now let's look at the steering wheel and the instrument panel. So the instrument panel is a seven inch instrument panel, which is colored. So yeah, it, it looks pretty nice. And then um, on the steering wheel, we have this stitching on the side. Um, so not bad, although it's not a con contrasted switching. Um, then the steering wheel is heated on all the um, all the trims so this one being the basic trim it, it has the steering wheel one level heating which is uh, pretty good then on the steering wheel you have on the left hand side you have the audio controls and on the right hand side you have the cruise control um, the adoptive cruise control um, then the safe distance uh, marker here so you can set the safe distance and then the mode and let's look at what do we have inside so we have uh, for example the driving assistance uh, options there so the SCC response then the uh, vehicle departure alert and the lane following alert so LFA which is the lane keeping assist uh, function but um, it also shows you back in the lane so the lane following assist what Kia and uh, Hyundai calls it um, and then this one is only for the chime then the driver fatigue system so the driver attention they call it is also there then the lane safety forward collision is for all the um, uh, so the pedestrian detection the cycle detection and the car detection so it is a full uh, emergency braking system which is uh, pretty good let's see inside what is uh, yeah so we have the lane keeping assist and lane departure warning so so both of them are there so it it will chime and it will show you back so depending on what you choose if you want the car to show you back in the lane then this is the option lane keeping assist there so it has both um then the fca options so these are yeah the, dri the driving features you get inside hyundai's kona which is uh, which is not bad and then you have some of yeah the door options um the auto lock unlock um the lights uh no ambience lights here but uh, uh hyundai's uh, sorry the kia's um neo offers the ambient light option on its higher trim as well but uh, kona doesn't do that then um volume for pdw okay some of the sound options convenience um 
auto gear wipers um, road warning okay so standard option there service interval other features utility mode so quite many settings you can use in this uh, one and if you press on the on the mode button then so you get the, the driving modes options so you get the you can set the cruise um, or you can then put the speed limit there so either of these two so so these two driving options there and then um, do we have any other user features so we have the configuration info uh, sorry the consumption info and then yeah the the for the cruise control yeah you can set the distance from here so for example yeah we are not driving so i think it doesn't set that at the moment but you can uh, you can set the distance in this one and then the lane keeping assist um yeah you can see the lane keeping assist so different modes there that you can set otherwise a seven inch instrument panel as i said it's not much customizable so unlike some of the other car manufacturer would also give you an option to to customize this so you can for example put the speedometer then on the right side or you can see only the navigation there this one doesn't have that but perhaps it's the comfort version the style version might have some better customization than on the instrument panel but yeah standard seven inch instrument panel the steering wheel options yeah it doesn't look that bad and the steering wheel is tilt and telescoping manually so no electric tilt and telescoping even on the higher trims which is again another disappointment but yeah uh, yeah hyundai and kia they offer only manual tilt and telescope but it's uh, yeah it 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 has this nice range there so it uh, it tilts um, and telescopes pretty well so um, reasonably looking steering wheel and uh, surprising that it has this heating steering wheel heating um, then you have the shifters uh, shifting paddles also then on the back of the steering wheel which is good so you have the manual driving mode as well uh, with the automatic so this is really nice and behind that you have yeah the standard controls there and then the start stop button so it uh, both the version both the trims are coming with the start stop version uh, start stop button which is pretty nice um, let's continue then on the side so the entertainment screen this is a seven inch entertainment screen uh, because this is a comfort trim um, the style trim comes with a 10.25 inch um, screen um, a bit yes disappointment in terms of what we have on the sides of this so this is really cheap looking like um, the kids tablet you know the the side is plastic which is uh, yeah not nice looking it would have been nice to just have the screen there although it's a seven inch smaller screen doesn't matter but then uh, the side looks really cheap really basic so that that's a bit of a disappointment for me some of the knobs there on the side um, then the resolution is also not that impressive of course it's the seven inch um, the basic trim so that's why perhaps the 10 inch would have a better perhaps resolution and screen but uh, the difference is huge I mean this is really really basic looking screen and it looks really outdated old-fashioned and then on the entertainment screen you also have the app Android um, auto and the Apple CarPlay uh, it's uh, as as it shows here so it's on both the trim so this is a basic trim but it has that option which is really good so if you connect your um, phone with the USB here you can use it using this screen which is uh, pretty impressive let's continue on the climate control so this is a dual zone climate control so you can set if you want um, the driver side only or you can set both sides so dual zone climate controls um, then the standard buttons there nothing specific below that we have some room here and inside that we have the USB and the auxiliary uh, and the wireless charging so th 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 this doesn't have the wireless charging 
but the style um, trim gets the wireless charging as well so that's nice that you have the wireless charging then then on the higher trim and then the shifter knob this is um, yeah quite surprising for me so um, uh, different take from Hyundai's Kona uh, the Nero has that uh, round shifting knob but this one has the button so this is also yeah nice uh, some versatility to differentiate themselves I like it I mean it's it's only the button it's very simple so you have the four buttons there to to drive to reverse um, a la, and then the parking and the neutral and then you have the electric parking brake um, also then on all, all the trims so this one although it's a basic trim also have the electric parking brake which is pretty good um, then on the side you have the cup holders um, there is no cover for the cup holders it would have been nice to have the cover you know just shift it so that uh, then the center console would be just like something like this so then it would look neat and clean but anyhow um, yeah enough space for the cup holders there and then below that so this is impressive so just like I have seen in previous previous generation it used to have this kind of a center console which has extra space then below these shifters and uh, the cup holders it has um, a lot of this extra space here for your item so this is very good um i like this kind uh, this kind of a model so you have you get a lot of extra space then below all this configuration and also then below you have the 12 volt and one usb so on the other side for the other passenger that's nice so you you get the one usb charging port there and the 12 volt option so you this means you have two usbs um and then you have no you don't have any any usb here on the inside but perhaps the style trim also gets the third usb then here that's unfortunate that for the back passengers and then uh, you don't have any option for the usb here for charging but perhaps the style offers that for the back passenger on the back side so otherwise yeah the center console um it looks yeah, really modern uh, with these buttons I like it and uh, the color combination unfortunately because this is silver and the rest of the car is gray colored so um, doesn't integrate that well I think the color it would have been better to make this you know the simply the same color just like uh, they did with the door handle and with the rest of the things with the steering wheel with the stitching on the steering wheel it's all dark gray but then in the middle you have um, perhaps for some contrast they wanted it to be this color but i would have preferred to have um the then the same color matching on the center console as well but yeah uh, if you like the contrast it, it doesn't look that bad then let's continue below so behind the transmission what do we have here so we have the seat heating um, and that's amazing that they offer the seat heating for uh, both the driver and the passenger side and it's a three level seat heating uh, on the comfort trim no seat ventilation in any of the trims so even on the higher trim you don't get any seat ventilation but kia's nero have the seat ventilation for their ha highest trim so their luxury trim offers the seat ventilation but hyundai doesn't have that option for any of its trim but anyhow you get the three level seat heating at least for both sides um, no seat level heating uh, no seat heating for the rear passenger passengers um, the Nero does that for their um, for their higher trims but uh, Kona doesn't do that even on their higher trims so you don't get any seat heating for the rear passengers then uh, the drive modes so you have four drive modes just like Kia Nero so you get the um, sport mode echo mode comfort mode and then if you long press as it says hold the button and then it goes to echo plus mode just like this which means it will turn off the uh, the climate control and it will go into this emergency emergency mode to save your battery so that's that's a very nice feature i like it uh, it's in both kia nero and hyundai skona so in case you are really low on the battery then you can go to this uh, eco plus mode but otherwise yeah the standard echo comfort and sport mode which is uh, which is not bad so then the steering wheel heating like i said in all the trims and then the auto hold function this is uh, this is nice most of the cars have nowadays this auto hold function then the parking sensors 
um, turning them on and off from here as I said the parking sensors are only on uh, the rear side on this train but then you get the parking sensors on the front side as well and then let's see how does um, how does the camera look like if we put this now on the reverse um, so it has the uh, the distance marker but it also has the trajectory so if I turn my steering now yeah it has the trajectory also which is really good so uh, even on this basic train it has both the uh, the distance marker and the trajectory then let's start looking at the back seat uh, starting from the rear door so on the rear door you have a little bit of soft touch it's not that soft it actually mimics the the soft touch but it's it's also hard then you have um, the power window it's not one touch and uh, the gray color handle it's not aluminium but it matches with the rest of the body and then you have a little bit of space here for one cup and some extra space um, then the speaker here and then the back seat so it doesn't have any control on the side and it doesn't slide then the space in the back side so i am 164 centimeter and this is a bit tighter so not much space there for so for those of you with the um, with more height i think uh, a little bit of issue so you don't have much space so in terms of the driving dynamics so um, uh, the features which are offered on both the trims so the style trim and the comfort basic trim those features are the emergency braking system with pedestrian detection cyclist detection and car detection so the full emergency braking uh, which is a nice feature, safety feature is offered on all the trims here, uh, which is really nice. Um, then the adoptive cruise control. So you get the adoptive cruise control, um, but uh, the full stop is option is offered only on the style trim. So you get the adoptive cruise control with the safety distance on this basic trim as well. But then the full stop adoptive cruise control is offered only on the style trim. Uh, then you have the driver fatigue system uh, So the driver fatigue alert is on both the trims, which is really nice It's uh, again a very nice safety feature uh, Which is offered on both the trims. So this is very good um, Then you have the lane keeping assist or the lane uh, Lane departure alert what other uh, car manufacturers call it. So the chime warning um, so it has both the lane keeping assist what Kia, uh, what Kia and Hyundai calls it and the lane following assist which means that it um, it not only follows the lane but it uh, it also steers uh, steers the the steering wheel uh, which is amazing that it offers um, the Hyundai is offering that feature on both of its uh, its trims so it's semi autonomous driving feature so with the LFA the lane following assist so the steering wheel steers itself um, and this feature is then offered on both the trims which is really amazing so especially on the highway that i'm driving now so the car is steering itself um, you only need to have um, your hand on the steering wheel so it makes sure that your hand is there on the steering wheel so it alerts you but otherwise uh, even on this basic trim so this is a uh, comfort trim but it has that uh, the steering wheel control so the lane departure alert it also chimes if you are leaving your lane uh, but then it also have so you can uh, like I showed you on the option so you can choose uh, if you only want this to chime or you want the steering wheel to steer itself so that is the LFA what uh, Kia and Hyundai calls it so the with the LFA you are getting the full um, the, the semi-autonomous driving which is really good so all these four features are then the, then offered on all the trims for the electric version um, which is really impressive um, so the emergency braking uh, then the driver fatigue, then the adoptive cruise control, and the steering wheel, um, the lane following assist is offered on both the trims. Then you have uh, some of the optional features, which is uh, only then offered on the higher trim, so on the style trim. So these features are then missing from this comfort trim that I'm testing. So those features are the sign recognition, 
uh, which is a nice feature so you get that on the on the higher trim then you have uh, the intersection warning that I saw on the Kia's Nero but then the intersection warning feature is missing on on uh, Hyundai Kona, so you don't get that on any of the trim uh, so that is missing in uh, in, in Hyundai Kona. but then you have the rear collision uh, warning so RCCW feature so if a car is passing by uh, and you are you are reversing your car then you you get that alert uh, then uh, it's a, it's a nice feature and you get that on the style version so the uh, sign recognition the rccw then the third one uh, optional feature that you get on the style version only is the uh, blind spot monitoring so the blind spot monitoring is also missing on this basic trim and then the fourth one is this high beam assist so the high beam assist feature is also missing on this uh, comfort trim so the high beam assist feature is um, is only offered on the style trim uh, but it's good that you uh, at least have that option on the style trim so you can get that if you if you go for the higher trim uh, but then the rear view dimming like i told you before uh, is uh, available on all the trims so even in this basic version you get the rear view dimming feature which is really nice so it's uh, it's offered on both the trim so even if you get this comfort trim you get the rear view dimming but the high beam assist is only on the style trim so in terms of the driving dynamics i'm uh, again impressed uh, with these features so you get this um, especially that you get this semi-autonomous driving so the lane following assist is available even on the basic version which is really nice so in terms of the pricing for this car so hyundai's Kona comes in three different versions so you have the petrol uh, the hybrid and then the electric version of course um, it doesn't have the plug-in hybrid like the the kia nero uh, comes in the plug-in hybrid as well but it has these three different versions um, then you have the 39 kilowatt hour battery and the 64 kilowatt our battery options uh, for the electric version so the pricing for the petrol version it starts with around 20,000 euros uh, here in Finland uh, which is a nice competitive price uh, for the petrol version given that this is a subcompact uh, crossover so 20,000 euros uh, starting price is not that bad then you have um, for the hybrid version starts at around 28,000 euros which is the same as the Nero's hybrid uh, this is a bit smaller than Nero, so in that sense, I would have expected this to be a, a bit lower, even for the hybrid version. But it's the same price as the Kia Nero. Um, but then it's uh, it's cheaper than, uh, for example, the Prius. The Prius starts a bit higher. So in that sense, uh, given this is a, this is a subcompact crossover, so um, in that sense, it's a bit cheaper than the Prius um, so not that bad pricing I think for the hybrid version as well then the electric version starts at uh, 36,000 or a little above 36,000 euros uh, which is 4,000 around 4,000 euros less than a sister Kia Nero which is amazing uh, but this is uh, much smaller than Kia's Nero so in that sense I think you would expect this to be cheaper but this is 4,000 euros cheaper so this is amazing I think the pricing is quite good for this electric version uh, around 36,000 euros a very competitive price uh, compared to the electric other electric cars and this is the same price as Hyundai's Ionic so you get Ionic or uh, or the uh, Kona so Hyundai's Kona and Ionic has the same starting price uh, for both cars which is amazing so 36,000 euros for as the starting price for the electric version for both cars and then what about the competitors so the leaf starts at around 38,000 euros so this is cheaper than the leaf uh, which is good so the starting price is is competitive compared to the leaf uh, and then the other competitors so the main competitor would be model 3 which starts at around 48,000 euros is the starting price for the for the basic model 3 and it then the model 3 goes up to 64,000 euros so in that sense the starting price for this one 36,000 euros is is very good uh, it's a nice looking modern looking car 
although it's uh, it's small subcompact SUV but still 36,000 euros compared to 48,000 euros is is very competitive so I think uh, Hyundai has done a good job uh, with the pricing with pricing this car uh, compared to its competitors so both the Model 3 and the Nissan's Leaf I think this is uh, this is a nice competitive offering from Hyundai